what I'm looking at is this ultra luxury consumer growth. They are very exclusive. Um, they're very hard to access, and it takes a lot of time to talk to these people. But basically, what we uh, what I found in this particular study is the fact that contrary to Annabelle, they they weren't looking at you know the spokesperson or the person who's a salesperson is you know having to you know the distance between them in fact i don't know if it's a thing about thai consumers but they would like to speak to people with power if you understand what i mean like let's say they went into a store they prefer to talk to somebody who actually could give them the answers like you know i want this and you know when will i get it or somebody who had some sort of expertise a knowledge or even networks of friends because one thing that i found as part of the uh, highlight of this study is actually these luxury consumers they don't just buy the brand they don't just buy the product they buy the company in fact some of them will be dealers distributors some of them will even take over the company if they had enough money. So this is their expression of how much they love the brand and how much they identified with it. When we look at branding, uh, sort of uh, research in the past, we talk a lot about the prestige, the status, and I'm sure a lot of the people have been talking about that today. But beyond this you know, status is this creation of a fantasy of a world that they live in. Um, you have to understand that Again, I'm not sure if this is a specific group in a specific culture, but they do have their own circles. They have their own events, and they're the stars themselves. If you, you know, it's, the brand is more of a support. They, they, they are so confident of themselves. They're what they call the cultural elites. So they basically write their own stories. And so basically what happens is the brands have this you know, relationship with them on a daily basis and a consumption, um, both inconspicuous and conspicuously. I mean, they, they, they have memories that they think about, you know, especially the younger generations who have studied abroad. They bring back the stories that they had with brands. For example, internships. You know, you might not think it's important, but you know, having an intern who comes from, you know, your potential target or your best customers would be something useful as well. So this is basically how they build this experience that is making this research kind of different from the existing research on luxury. So um, this is what I found. Now this is what I integrated from Schmidt, actually he had layers and processes. I found that actually what happened was these processes were collapsed. Identifying and signifying became sort of two things that happened quite, you know, sort of together. Why? Because these things were basically the function and the symbolic, okay, part of the consumption. And basically what happened was people identified with things like country of origin, as you can imagine, quality, um, as you can imagine, this product attributes, you know, the store experience, all these things were the basic stuff. They talked about, you know, the history of the brand, and you'd be surprised. These people can tell you a lot about the brand. Also, in experience in integrating, what happened? Okay, we can actually see that the experience is going to be how they show their identity through the consumption of the brand. Now, you might think, hey, what does that actually mean? It means beyond just using it. It means playing a part with it as well. And I'm not sure if this is because they are very close-knit, but they actually join events. You know, they're, they're very busy. They have to join events for this brand, this party for this brand, and they feel important being invited. Um, and they really actually start to have this uh, network in emotional links. Why? They don't just network with the brand itself, but then they talk to the people who have the authority in the brand. You know, they love to speak to, let's say, the marketing director, or they'd love to speak to the owner. And again, I'm not sure if this is a Thai thing, but when these people are very cordial, very supportive, they love it. It's a feeling of, you know, experience a bit of power, I guess, the status component that they actually have and they feel. And they also have this nostalgic memories because they pass along the use of brands in their families.